everyone, I'm Ian McCarthy of Lifting for Life and No Bullshit Bodybuilding, and today I'm bringing you the next installment of the Lifting for Life Q&A series. And today's question comes from Rajat Singh, who asks, how to be consistent with the diet, hitting macros? Ultimately, I think this comes down to trial and error, trying out different approaches, seeing how you respond, adjusting on that basis, and ultimately, hope, hopefully getting closer and closer to the approach which is ideal for you, recognizing that it's a continuous process of improvement. Now, I do think we can speak with confidence to two extreme approaches, which typically don't work well for people. The first is the traditional restrictive clean eating approach in which someone is perhaps told they have a specific set of foods they can eat. They're told when they can eat them, the exact number of meals they're going to eat per day, etc. And I think there are numerous clear issues with this. The first is dieting in that manner can be nutritionally inferior if that restriction means that you're excluding healthy foods. Admittedly, this quickly gets outside the scope of the discussion of adherence. On the adherence side, for one thing, dieting in this manner can just be boring and someone won't want to continue doing it as a result. But I think more significantly, it can actually create cravings for the foods that one is told or believes that they can't eat. This phenomenon was illustrated to me amusingly when I was a child by a teacher who said, don't think about alligators. Now, unavoidably, in being told that, you start thinking about alligators, even if you weren't to begin with. So for many people, the moment they're told you can't eat any quote-unquote dirty foods, whether that be classic Pop-Tarts, whether it be the ice cream, etc., that creates a craving for those foods. Now, some people are able to fight through that. Some people have, whether we want to call it willpower, discipline, ultimately they're able to simply will themselves to not eat the food that they think they can't eat. However, in my submission, you're better off designing your whole plan in a way that you don't have to exert that effort, as opposed to the alternative where you design a plan where you do have to rely on your discipline, given a lot of people, perhaps a majority, if I had to bet, I would bet a majority of people simply aren't going to have that discipline to sustain that. And even if they can, why would you if you can get the same result uh, working less hard? It's just an issue of efficiency and enjoyment. So again, I think for most people, we can say, okay, a clean eating approach isn't going to work. Although I would note there are some people who, and I'm really thinking in the vein of folks who, to use a specific example, maybe they have a military background, so extreme structure works really well for them. That kind of person might actually thrive off of a very structured, very rigid, consistent approach. And I would just, you know, if that is the case, I might recommend that approach. And I would just emphasize that they ensure they're getting enough variety in terms of uh, food sources, etc., that they're avoiding deficiencies and, and such that their diet, even though it's rigid, is as healthy as it can be physiologically. But again, I think that's a pretty extreme minority of folks. On the other end, we have extreme flexibility. And I want to acknowledge the fact that I think things I've said and done in the past on this topic have potentially led some people to try this approach. And, and I don't think it's ideal in most cases. And that's an approach where you say, all that matters is protein, carbs, fat, and just basically YOLO everything. In other words, get up every day, you have these numbers. If you want to eat one meal, 12, six meals, it's the same, just kind of go by feel, take it moment by moment, etc. Now, I think the issue with this is, you know, the one, I think there are multiple, but the, the one clear issue is it results in a lot of decision fatigue in that the absence of structure means that you have to decide what you're going to eat at every single meal every day. And that alone is problematic, and then when you combine that with hunger, the result is you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to make bad decisions. You're increasing the likelihood that you're just going to say, I think in the, the literature it's actually called the, the what the hell effect, where you just say, I can't do this, I'm just going to, like this is what's available, this sounds tasty, I'm just going to eat this. So what ends up working well for most people is something in between where 
there's clear structure and consistency on the one hand, but on the other hand, there is flexibility. You know, if someone really, really wants ice cream and they really can accommodate that in their macros and they're still able to address micronutrient needs, fiber, they're getting a high quality protein, etc., they can do that. But the diet isn't so flexible that the person is just overwhelmed with the number of micro decisions they have to make. What is my protein source going to be here? How many meals am I going to eat per day? I said I was going to eat four. Okay, so what am I going to eat here? I did this. Oh, shit. I ate all my carbs already. I need to get protein, just exclusively protein and fat in this meal. And I have one, literally 1.5 grams of carbs left. And what the hell am I going to do with that? And I really just want pizza, etc. And that kind of situation is one that you can at least decrease the likelihood of happening provided you institute some structure. So to speak from my own experience, not that I think that this is going to be true of every single person, but I think that I'm able to speak to my own experience with authority and hopefully you'll benefit from it. What I found works best for me, both cutting and bulking, I was cutting for eight weeks up until two weeks ago and I'm bulking now. And interestingly, almost everything I did cutting, I've carried over into bulking and it's still worked well. What has worked for me is the first three meals that I eat, I eat uh, four or five meals per day, and one of them is really just a protein shake because I'm trying to get an extra protein bolus in there. So let's just say four meals a day. The first three are almost always exactly the same. Now I will change them over time in response to changes in my macronutrient needs, but the meal is set and then I will make a ch I might make a change to that meal, but then once I've instituted that change, it'll stay the same for weeks and weeks. So breakfast, almost always identical. Those of you who follow me on Instagram will have seen like 600 photos of this practically identical breakfast. My pre-workout meal, I did recently change it up, but the meal I'm doing now, I will continue doing indefinitely. My po post-workout meal is almost always exactly the same. The result is I just know what I'm doing ahead of time. I don't have to, just, I don't have to get up and, and be like, what am I going to eat? And I mean, think of that, you wake up, you're groggy, like, and you have to figure, you know, calculate macros. And I say this realizing that it's not hugely time and energy intensive, but in planning everything ahead, I simply don't have to do that period. I know like, this is what I'm preparing. This is what I eat. Pre-workout meal, same deal. Post-workout meal, same deal. I've designed those meals such that they all have an appropriate amount of high quality protein, the, the healthy fat I want, the fruit I want, the veggies, etc. So that's locked in, and then my last meal, I just look at what I have left in terms of macros, which is pretty consistent given those other meals are the same. I get a sense of what it is I want, and then I, I prep that meal. So there's the flexibility with all these other meals being consistent, and the result is you know, I largely avoid decision fatigue. My macros are where they need to be. I'm getting my veggies, all of this. So all of the beneficial aspects of clean eating are there. And the degree of flexibility off of which I thrive, from which I most benefit, is there. And it's not so much flexibility that I'm, I'm admittedly, even with that one meal, I will sometimes find myself like not enjoying or wanting to go through the process of making those calculations, which is really an issue of like waiting too long typically to, to do that work. But for the most part, I'm able to avoid decision fatigue. So if you ask, okay, what the heck does this have to do with you? And I'm very aware in making videos like this, I, I desire to make them actionable, not just, oh, this is an interesting theoretical discussion. So I'd like to speak to the wrong way to do this. I think some people might get the impression that trial and error means uh, just arbitrarily select something and just kind of do it and see what happens. Now, admittedly, I think there can be value in kind of doing things randomly and then assessing. But what I, would, what I think the better approach generally is is to really take kind of a scientific approach to this. In other words, sit down and, I love this phrase, use your own best judgment, sit down and, and given your experience and your knowledge, create a hypothesis, some idea, some concept that based on everything you know, seems like it seems, sounds like it will work well in practice. And then try it out, give it an honest shot and Assess the outcome. Okay, did this work? Uh, overall, I'd say it was 70% uh, good. You know, these were the beneficial aspects of it. This is what didn't work. 
and then make changes on that basis. And I think it's really important to recognize that this isn't a way to get around effort, and, and thus you need to be really committed to this process. Again, you need to sit down and put, the, put in the thought up front of, okay, what exactly is it I'm actually going to try? So does that mean today I'm going to try eating exactly the same breakfast and post-workout meal and dinner, and I'm going to try doing things differently for lunch? Or today I'm going to try having like all of my early meals be different, and then I will top off my macros at the end of the day. In other words, a very flexible approach. This is the very flexible approach I'm going to try. So you need to be deliberate in deciding what you're going to do, and then you need to be disciplined in actually executing what it is you've developed in your mind. And then you need to be precise in reviewing how it is it's, it has worked. Because I think the risk is in, again, just doing things arbitrarily and, and okay, so I'm going to do this, and then it doesn't work, and not assessing how it panned out properly, trying something else, it doesn't work, etc. And that that is one of the things which can result in the person who just kind of perpetually fucks up, like, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. They're not putting in enough thought on the front end, and they're not really seriously sitting down and saying, I mean, it can be beneficial to literally write down, this is what worked. I waited too long to calculate these macros, so I was really tired, I ended up eating this, okay, so I need to move this forward, etc. So be specific in what you're committing to, and then assess it seriously, and then come to specific, actionable conclusions about how you're going to change it. So, again, to speak from my own experience, I did things more flexibly in the past. The result was a lot of decision fatigue, and I concluded that it was very clear to me this is an issue, so I tried what I'm doing now, and it has worked better. And I've continuously continued critiquing, continuously continued critiquing. I've continued reassessing what it is I'm doing, and as an example, something I already mentioned, I've realized that if I wait too long to run my macros and figure out what I'm eating at my last meal, that it can be really tough to, to do that as opposed to just eating whatever my gut tells me to do. So I need to, like the specific actionable conclusion that I draw from that is, all right, I need to move this forward such that I'm able to actually end up hitting these numbers. So I do feel that this is you know, less precise and specific than, than some folks want. I know some people probably just want it like, here are the five steps to hitting your macros. And, and indeed, this is something I'll continue thinking about, and maybe in the future that's where I'll be. Maybe I will feel confident in saying, do this, 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 and this. But I think that there's so much inter-individual variability here. You do have the androids who are just like exactly the same foods. They, like, they eat their, the meals at the same time every day, etc., and they're totally content doing that, and they should do that, again, provided the, the diet is appropriately nutritious. And then you have the people who just hardcore YOLO everything and they hit their macros every day and that's fantastic. And I think those people should do that, again, provided the diet is appropriately nutritious. And I think most people land somewhere in the middle and you, you through your own experience, I, Ian McCarthy, this kid in a YouTube video, can't just tell you like, hey, Joe, this is what you need to do. I, have, like, I don't know anything about you, like what your background is. You know, maybe you suffer from an eating disorder. So that's something that you need to take into account, et cetera. You need to, uh, again, use your own best judgment and experiment and, and seek continuous slight improvement with the hope of eventually getting to something that, that's, you know, consistently like 90, 95% really, really solid, realizing 100% probably isn't a real thing. So thank you so much for your time, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Uh, if you made it this far, if you found any value in the video, please do like it. Please do share it with anyone who you think might benefit from it. Feel free to comment below. I'm really curious as to your thoughts on this. And again, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys watching. Support means the world to me. So not sure when I'll see you again, but I will. All right. Wow, this lighting is really, really flattering. Bye.